It's lesson time! Lesson time! Happy lesson time is here yet again. Module 6. Lesson 6. Let's do it. What are we doing? Well, this. We're going to use area models and number line to represent mixed numbers. Mixed numbers, okay, remember what that is. The units of ones, tenths, and hundredths. Okay, so there will only be three digits involved here. We're not going to go out to tens and hundreds and thousands. Okay, just ones, tenths, hundredths. We'll do it, of course, in both fraction and decimal forms, not to make more work, but to make life easier for you because you know fractions already. Yeah, let's do it. Counting by hundredths. Notice we're skip counting by what? By five hundredths here. And then we'll go back and look at something interesting. So let's do it together. Zero hundredths, five hundredths, ten hundredths, fifteen hundredths, twenty hundredths, twenty-five hundredths, thirty hundredths. Now, what do you notice? Perhaps you notice that some of these, yes, we could quite easily find an equivalent with tenths. So think 10 pennies is one dime, 20 pennies is two dimes, 30 pennies is three dimes. So voila! Zero hundredths is zero tenths, 10 hundredths equal to one tenth, 20 hundredths, two tenths, 30 hundredths, three tenths. Now you might be wondering, can we express these in tenths? Not in any kind of standard fractional form, no. Okay, this is review. So we're gonna kind of go through this. I'm not gonna like explain what we're doing. If you are confused, go back to lesson five because that's where we taught this. Three hundredths, write it as a decimal. 0 0.03, yes, right? The three is in the hundredths place. Five hundredths, 0 0.05. Five in the hundredths place. And by the way, I'm saying how to write it. You still read this as five hundredths as a math number. I'm saying how do you write it? How do you write eight hundredths? Zero point zero eight. Eight hundredths. Four hundredths? Zero point zero four. Four in the hundredths place. Four hundredths. Fourteen hundredths. Same thing. Zero point one, four. Notice that we read the number 14. What place am I in? Hundredths. 17 hundredths, 0 0.17. 17 hundredths. How do we write 53 hundredths? 0 0.53. 53. What place am I in? Hundredths. Great. 100 hundredths. Ah, we know that's equal to one whole, right? And we write it out to here. Notice I could read this number as 100. What place am I in? Hundredths. Beauteous. Ah, oh, this is going to get squishy. You'll see what I mean. Four. What do we have? Four what? Four hundredths. The value is four hundredths. Good. How about now? We have a row of five and three more. Okay, so eight hundredths. Very good. We have a group of ten. One more. So total is... 11 hundredths, and we're going to break that down in a minute, don't you worry. One more makes 12 hundredths. Okay, great. All right, so now let's write that as a decimal. 12 hundredths. We just did this, right? 0 0.12, right? There it is. Now I write 12 hundredths as a fraction. Okay, so 12 hundredths as a fraction. That's actually surprisingly easy to do, right? 12 hundredths. Ah, I'm out of room. I can't fit on this slide anymore. Send Aunt Bertha my love. All right, so now let's decompose that value as a fraction and a decimal. Ah, some breathing space. Okay, here's 12 hundredths and here's 12 hundredths, yes. So let's decompose that. So we're going to break it down into how many hundredths plus how many hundredths? Well, it's 12, right? So what's in, yeah, okay, 10 and then two, right? So 10 hundredths, two hundredths. What can we do with that 10 hundredths? I bet you know. That's right, it's equal to 1 tenth, and the 2 hundredths stays the same. Great. Can we do the same thing with the decimal? You betcha. All right, let's do it. 12 hundredths. We're gonna actually write the same thing, 10 hundredths, aren't we? But as a decimal, there's 10 hundredths, and then 2 hundredths. 
What can we do with the ten hundredths? We can rewrite it in decimal form as well as one tenth and then plus two hundredths. Now here's the mathematical moment. Watch. Notice something here? Twelve hundredths, twelve hundredths. Ten hundredths, ten hundredths. Two hundredths, two hundredths. One tenth, one tenth. Two hundredths, two hundredths. Ah, yes. You say the same thing in both fraction and decimal form. Moving on. Oh, this is a doozy. All right, we can handle it though. We have the perimeters of four rectangles. Remember, perimeter measuring around. How far is it around? So it's measured just in straight centimeters or meters. There's no squares. That's area square. Yeah. So let's we're just take one question at a time here. Okay, which rectangle has the smallest perimeter? All right, well, you see they're all in different forms, right? And so let's put them all in the same format so we can easily compare them and find which one is the smallest. So just rewriting them here, no change. 54 centimeters is what fraction of a meter? Well, picture a meter stick and there's 100 centimeters there. So 54 is 54 out of 100. 54 out of 100, 54 hundredths meter. Okay, see, so I just put it into hundredths of a meter. This one already is in that form. Great. How about down here with the eight tenths meter? All I have to do is write it in fractional form, eight tenths meter. But then wait, I say, uh, well, everything else I want to put into hundredths, right? Okay, so what is eight tenths? Well, I can multiply it by ten tenths and get how many hundredths? Eighty hundredths. Very good. Now, why didn't I do anything with the 54 meters? Okay, now let's think about it. 54 hundredths meter, 54 centimeters, is less than a meter. About yay. 69 hundredths meter is 69 centimeters. About yay. 8 tenths meter or 80 hundredths meter, or we could also call it 80 centimeters. About yay. Okay, whatever. About, you know, in this range here. 54 meters would be 54 of these meter sticks. Unless you go to a school in, I don't know where, you could not line up 54 meter sticks in a straight line in your classroom. You'd have to go out into a very long stretch of hallway, because that's, that's about half a football field of 54 meters. That's a decent distance, you know? I mean, it's not like huge, but it's a decent distance. So this one, C, is clearly like so far beyond. All the other ones are less than a meter. They're centimeters. And the C there, the 54 meters, is so far beyond all the others. So we, we know it's not the smallest. All right. So now which one is the smallest? Okay. Obviously A is. Okay. Great. Cha-ching. All right. Now C. Ah, going back to C. How many meters less than a kilometer is that? And I actually really like this question because, like I was just saying, that's going to be like down a hallway at school, a decent, decently long hallway is 54 meters. Try to picture if you can, 54 of those meter sticks would be a lot of meter sticks all lined up in a, yeah, that's, that's decently long. But it still doesn't hold a candle to a single kilometer. Kilometer has how many meters in it? 1,000, that kilo means thousand meters, kilo, meter, kilometer. And you say kilometer, okay, that's what you say. So it's a thousand. Um, so if we, say the kilometer is a thousand meters, well then the perimeter of C is how much less? Well, how much less? We're obviously subtracting, right? Okay, so we do 1,000 minus 54. We get 946. So even that length of your hallway is just a smallest part of a single kilometer. Kilometers is a decent distance, you know, com comparable to a mile. So it's something that you'd either be going on a long walk or maybe even hop in the car if you're going a few kilometers, um, but you know, not just a little stroll down the hallway. Lastly, and I'm spending some time on this by the way, not to belabor it, because there's actually a lot of good learning to be had here, so stick with me kid. Compare the perimeters of B and D, all right? Which rectangle has the greater perimeter? How much greater? Well, we had already said that D was 8100, so obviously 81 hundredths is more than 69 hundredths, sorry. But the question then is how much greater? To find how much more, we're going to subtract, of course, yes. Um, so 80 hundredths minus 69 hundredths. Do the subtraction there, what do you get? 
Well, you can add up. You can go from 69 to 70 is 1, and then 10 more, so it's 11. So the difference is 11 hundredths. So D is 11 hundredths meter greater than rectangle B's perimeter. And remember, 11 hundredths meter is 11 centimeters. About yay. Not too long. All right. Whew. Now we're getting to the actual lesson, and you're going to find that today's lesson is pretty straightforward. So we're just going to use area models to do mixed numbers with ones, tenths, and hundredths. What does that look like? It looks like this. All right. Here's a number. One and twenty-two hundredths. All right. So let's use an area model to shade in that number. There's the one hole, and then twenty-two hundredths. Easy enough. How do we write that as a decimal? Same thing. 1 and, now meaning decimal point, 1 and 22 hundredths. 1 and 22, what place am I in? Hundredths. Could I call this number, this is just a bonus for you, could I call this number 122 hundredths? Yes, I could. Because wouldn't this in money be 122 cents, 122 pennies, 122 hundredths? Yes. But reading this as a math number, we would say 1 decimal point, there it is, pop, and 22 hundredths. Beautiful. Moving on. I'm going to take that same number, boom, and I'm going to say, let's do this now on a number line. You'll see, straightforward, look. There's 1, 20, 2 hundredths. Notice, though, that the 20 hundredths is written as 2 tenths, because isn't that so? 20 hundredths equals 2 tenths? I think you're beginning to catch on here. Let's do some more. All right, here's a different number. Zing! 3 and 46 hundredths. How would I write that as a decimal? Same thing. 3 and 46 hundredths. All right, 3 and 46 hundredths. There it is on the number line. Notice, though, I'm being cheap and cheesy here. I don't feel like drawing that old number line. So I know what 3 looks like on the number line. I'm not a kindergartner. So then I'm just going to do that starting from 3. So that's the 3, 46 hundredths. Beautiful. Guess what? <sighs> Just a little bit left. All right. Now we're going to match the unit form, okay, where you're naming the units, like ones, tenths, hundredths, to the decimal and fraction form. What does that look like? It looks like this. Here's a number. We'd say 3.8 is how you'd write it. 3 and 8 tenths. All right. Notice that the, the decimal point does an important thing. Everything over there to the left of that decimal point, that, those are whole numbers. Everything to the right is all less than one. In fact, the further you go out there, and this is mind-blowing, isn't it? The further you go out there, the smaller and smaller the number gets. So if I wrote 3.899999999, that nine way down there is like so tiny, it's, it's nothing we'd use in any daily life. So Important, just note here what the decimal point does. All right, now let's move on. Let's write that uh, three ones, eight hundredths in decimal form, okay? Three ones, and then an eight in the hundredths place. Notice we have the zero because we have zero tenths there. Now, are these the same, eight tenths, eight hundredths? Or are they different? Yes, they are different. Now look, and this, this shows why, look. 8 tenths, well, that's equal to 80 hundredths, isn't it? 8 dimes equals 80 pennies. In fact, looking at these in terms of money, and this is looking ahead where you have to start comparing decimals, and it, that, that, I'm telling you, kind of warning you, that gets a little tricky unless you really stick to this now. 8 tenths is equal to 80 hundredths. So if you were comparing these two numbers here, greater than, less than, equal to, well, 8 tenths is more than 8 hundredths. And this shows you why. Because it's 80 hundredths is obviously more than 8 hundredths. If these were money, $3.80 is more than $3.08. Beauteous. Now let's just do it as an area model here. Note the joke. There we go. 80 hundredths equals 8 tenths. I proved it. You can't say it's not so. 80 hundredths equals 8 tenths. They are the same. I can prove it again to you, not just with an area model, but mathematically by dividing by a value of 1, 10 tenths. 
80 hundredths divided by 10 tenths is 8 tenths. Is it not? Yes, it is. You know it is. Don't try to... Okay, anyway. Now you're on to the problem set where you're doing exactly what you're doing. There it is, a mixed number in fractional form. You'll write it in decimal form. Shade in 1 and 15 hundredths. They try to throw you by giving you an extra one here that you don't need, okay? And then do it on the number line. Same thing there. Uh, this one actually is similar, but you're just going to, you have a number line that just goes from 2 to 3, from 7 to 8. So really you're only concerned with the fractional part. All right, I'll leave that to you. Think in terms of money will help you. Um, and here, now they're just giving it to you, raw data crunching here, one, and this is unit form, one, one, two hundredths. Write that as a fraction and a decimal. And I would encourage you to write the fraction first because that will be a help to you in writing the decimal form. And then more co connected to dots. And you will notice that there are five things here and four there and four there, and yet, they will all be used because it says some have more than one match, okay? Um, exit ticket, as usual, same thing but shorter. And when you get to the homework, what do you do? You got it. Hop over to the homework time video to work through that. And look what we have done. Yet again, we've finished another wonderful Eureka math lesson. Congratulations to you and I both and to the world. Glory, glory, hallelujah. And I will see you again. And next time, it is once again lesson time.